I wanted to say real quick uh, about <clears throat> about what I said in the last video about in sanctification we we act or we are active. I don't want to fall into that error of saying by using saying that that we are active in our sanctification, uh, that we have a part in our sanctification. Uh, that's probably not the best use of language to ever use. I just want to say that in sanctification, good works are done, but the good works that are done are the result of being sanctified by the Spirit. So we are a passive, so we are passive in both justification and sanctification. Uh, of course, the two are separate, but they are also, but one leads to the other. So you are justified by by the impu, uh, imputed righteousness of Christ, and as a result, you are <coughs> you are sanctified, set apart, and as uh, as being set apart, you are then henceforth, you know, uh, you do good works. Uh, however, you know, frail that is, you know, whatever. Uh, of course, believers still sin. That's why their one assurance is Christ alone. So. There's that. I also wanted to post up another video real quick that kind of explains the big issue with Clark and Van Til. Gordon H. Clark and Cornelius Van Til. One of the major uh, uh, major uh, doctrines dealt, dealt between Clark and Van Til resides in the epistemology approach. Clark, Gordon H. Clark, views knowledge not from an irrational view, he uh, did not believe that there are paradoxes, irreconcilable paradoxes, things that seem to contradict. Clark viewed that all systems uh, of, of the uh, in the Bible uh, in the Bible alone uh, was. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Uh, is uh, systems and uh, well, hang on. Hang on. Sorry. At the struggle here. So basically, Clark viewed that all systems uh, other than the Bible alone was inadequate to give one one knowledge. In the history of the church, uh, there has been uh, there has been uh, many uh, many uh, contradictions. Uh, you know, many views. Uh, you know, extremes, extreme views. Uh, such as free will versus sovereignty, uh, faith versus good works. The question with some of these issues is how how do they relate, or are or how are they to be understood? Does man have free will? Is God sovereign? If both are true, then how how are they both true and not irreconcilable? Uh, are we justified by faith alone? If so. Then what of uh, what of those uh, texts that seem to teach the contrary, like James two, which is what we kind of dealt with the last in the last video, um, or of the, uh, the, the, the uh, or uh, let's see, let's see. One of the things I, I admire about Clark comes from a uh, you know who comes from a Calvinistic viewpoint uh, is that uh, is that of his rigorous work in removing uh, the the uh, paradoxes, the irreconcilable uh, paradoxes. Um, you know, let's see. Da, 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 da. I had, uh, you know, of course, in college, I had my faults, uh, uh, you know, and a lot of the people in college that I went to, which was Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, seemed like they just wanted to just, Leave it, you know. There's paradoxes, and that's we can't reconcile them. But reconcile these paradoxes. I didn't like that. I wanted to, you know. Of course, I'm, you know, I don't know everything. So there's probably some things that I have in my mind that are basically tensions. But you know, I leave that to someone else who may be called to to iron out those tensions. But if paradox don't exist, which is the primary issue. Then how can one explain things? Are we just 
are, are we just uh, by uh, justified by faith in works? Or are we justified by faith alone? Uh, what what do you do with uh, with with these seemingly opposing texts? You know, like James two or Romans three, uh, or even just the whole book of Romans in general. You know, uh, you know, is it that we do we we do our part, or or is it that God does uh, His part? And so, uh, or is it that you know we also do our part? I don't know. Th those are just questions to be asking. Uh, you know, so one of the things, you know, uh, I've done is stop listening to certain theologians because they just seem to leave it there. You know, we can't know anything. We can't do this or that, you know, um, you know, and this is a good thing, I guess, in a lot of ways. Gilbert Beebe was a, uh, was a primitive Baptist, uh, church pa uh, pastor, leader or whatever, teacher, you know, you know, uh, just leave it at the Bible alone. I mean, I think in some ways that's good. We, we can also systemize thoughts. Uh, when the Bible speaks of mystery, these guys, people uh, who hold to paradoxes, you know, want to say it is something we cannot know. Whereas in reality, mystery in the Bible is referred to as a thing once, once hidden, but is now plainly revealed. E Ephesians 1 verse 9 uh, says God made known the mystery of His will. Paul says He declares the wisdom of God, a mystery that was that has been hidden. First Corinthians two seven, or even Colossians one twenty six, the mystery that was hidden for ages but is now revealed. So there are mysteries, no doubt, but these mysteries are revealed by God in Christ Jesus. I personally like to explain the. Uh, the relations between sovereignty and our accountability. I like to explain the law passages in the promise passages. Uh, there's also those who want to teach the archetypical knowledge and the ectypical knowledge. I'll put that in the in a description box. What that is, uh, or what I'm, what those words are, uh, is the the. It, it is oftentimes, you know, they, they are used by theologians who want to make uh, our knowledge and God's knowledge different uh, in every way. Of course, I think I agree with the use of these terms, or not that I agree with those theologians who say, who want to say that, uh, that but I like the terms themselves if they can be explained rightly. Uh, I think I agree uh, with the terms, but I disagree with the meaning that they attach to those terms. God knowingly, God knows uh, knowledge, or yeah, God's knowledge is eternal, for He knows all things, for He is the Creator. Our knowledge depends on God's knowledge. God gives us knowledge and wisdom. This means, this doesn't mean we will know every everything like God. I mean, Adam probably knew everything like God because God gave him that knowledge. Of course, the result of the fall, the noetic effect, is that we now come into the world, you know, not having knowledge of everything. We have to remember, be reminded, this is what Plato says, you know, Plato, Augustine, these guys. Uh, the difference between God's knowledge and our knowledge is quantitative, not qualitative. He knows infinitely more about a proposition, whereas we know some things about the proposition. So there's no qualitative difference. It's just that God knows everything about what a proposition entails. We may not know every single thing that a proposition entails, uh, of course, at least this side of glory. Analogies, metaphors, stories only make sense because they have some sort of univocal uh, uh, meaning. If we, however, say God's knowledge and man's knowledge are not the same in any sense, then what kind of knowledge is, is it that God gives to man? Is man's knowledge that, uh, is man's knowledge uh, that, 
Uh, I can't. Uh, there's one thing I need to go back and re rewrite. But uh, is man's knowledge, uh, true knowledge, and God's knowledge false, or vice versa? If what we know about God is not true, then so is the other parts of theology. Systematic theology is so called because each system affects the other parts of the system. The serpent says, says uh, to Eve, Has God truly said? Is it true? Who can know? The other distinction would uh, feed into the concept of God's revealed versus hidden or secret will. The majority of people believe we shouldn't concern ourselves with election, for it is God's secret. Secret. We can only concern ourselves with what is revealed. This is true, uh, of course. I would say that. Uh, prying into God's mind is dangerous, apart from Scripture. But God reveals secrets. These once propositions that were hidden are now revealed to us in the Bible. The Bible alone is the mind of God revealed. The Bible deals with election and reprobation, and this we too also deal with it. If you don't agree with me on that, I would say read the Gospels, Matthew, you know, the Old Testament too deals with it. First chapter, first chapter and first verse of the Bible is about predestination. Uh, even Plato made a, you know, contradiction to what the Bible says says the same thing, sort of. But anyways, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. Bye.